everyone. Today we're doing Oreo cookie truffles with cookies and cream frosting. Starting off with some Oreo cookies, of course. There's about 28 in that small package and you're going to blend those until they become fine crumbs. You can do this in a food processor or by hand by putting them in a Ziploc bag and just pounding them with a rolling pin. Once the cookies are all ground up, you're going to add some cream cheese, about eight ounces or a 250 gram package of cream cheese. You could probably get away with about three quarters of a package if you didn't want to use as much. Then you need to mix in that cream cheese with those cookie crumbs. I started off using a knife just to cut the cream cheese bar into some smaller pieces and then moved to mixing with my hands because I found it to be a little bit easier, messier, but it worked well. Once you have a nice smooth dough, take small portions of that dough and roll it between your hands until you get little Oreo cookie truffle ball shapes. About an inch in diameter is perfect. And that package of cookies and that package of cream cheese made 31 of these little Oreo cookie truffle balls. Now at this point, if you put these in the freezer for about 20 minutes, take them out, you could dip them into some white chocolate or some regular chocolate and you would have Oreo cookie truffles just on their own. And you could even turn them into Oreo cookie truffle pops if you put a popsicle stick in them. We're not going to do that. We're just going to simply put those in the freezer for about 20 minutes. And while we're waiting for that, we can prepare the rest of this recipe. I'm using a vanilla uh, cake mix, actually a French vanilla cake mix. You could use a white cake mix as well. And then you're just going to prepare it according to package directions by adding the eggs, oil, and liquid that's required on the back of the box. So once your cake mix is all blended, you can pour it into a Ziploc bag, cut the corner off, and then you're going to put a very small amount in the bottom of each of those muffin paper liners in a muffin tin. Then place one of those chilled Oreo cookie truffle balls in each muffin cup. And then cover it with additional batter and you want to fill those muffin cups until they're about three quarters full. This is why it's important that you don't want to make those Oreo cookie truffles any bigger than about an inch in diameter because you don't want them to stick out of the batter. You want, to, want them to be covered completely. Now, while that's baking at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes, you are going to prepare your frosting. This is two thirds of a cup of butter that's at room temperature and I just blended it until it was light and fluffy. And then to this, I'm adding approximately four cups of powdered sugar. You can add it in a little bit at a time if you don't have a big bowl. And you'll also need about four tablespoons of cream or milk. And I put in uh, just sh almost a third of a cup or so. I put in a little at a time. I'm used to making this frosting, so I kind of uh, don't follow an exact recipe when I make it. I just kind of go by feel as I'm as I'm making it. But once you start to blend, if you find it to be a little bit too stiff, add a little bit more milk. And if it's too runny, then you just add a little bit more powdered sugar until you get a texture that you like. And I like to beat this frosting on high for at least five minutes or so. And that way it gets nice and fluffy. So once you get the frosting texture that you want, you just need to add some cookie crumbs. Now I had a box of Oreo cookie crumbs that were already prepared. So I just sprinkled about a quarter cup into the frosting and then blended it together. Uh, but you can certainly alter the amount of cookie crumbs you add to this to your taste. But it really does look like cookies and cream frosting when you're done. Once that's well blended, I put the frosting into a pastry bag. I used a large star tip. I believe it's a 1M tip. This frosting recipe makes enough for about 24 cupcakes, maybe a little bit more depending on how thick you're going to put the frosting on the cupcakes. These are the cupcakes out of the oven and cooled completely. And then you just frost as desired. You can put a little or as much frosting as you want. You don't have to use a pastry bag. You can just use a spatula to put the frosting on the cupca cupcakes as well. And then to garnish, you can use these miniature Oreo cookies or even use a, a piece of a regular sized Oreo cookie if you'd like. 
and then they are done. Now these look pretty cute on their own once they're all completed, but the real magic happens when you cut the cupcake open and I'm gonna show you what that looks like uh, in these photographs. This recipe worked out quite well for quantities. And what I mean by that is that I had enough cake batter, enough frosting and enough Oreo cookie balls to make about 30 without much leftover anything. I had just enough cake batter, I had one extra uh, Oreo cookie truffle ball and I had just enough frosting to cover them all. I brought them to work and everyone loved them. And here's what it looks like inside. You can see the great contrast between the little Oreo truffle ball and the French vanilla cake mix. That little Oreo cookie ball in the center actually turns into kind of like a little Oreo cookie cheesecake because it does cook while the rest of the cupcake is baking and it makes for a really great cupcake. Nice and moist and that cookies and cream frosting is delicious. So why don't you give them a try?